Will Smith once said, God placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. Doesn't that sound like something God would do? Well, let me tell you a little bit about a feeling that was suffocating me like a python killing its prey called fear. All I ever knew how to do was let fear control me and all my decisions. I kept throwing it up to God over and over again. But what we don't realize is that God is not a genie. He'll definitely do his part and give you all that you need to overcome any obstacle, but you have to put in work too. And that's where I lacked. I would go to him so much about this fear that as time progressed, he gave me my truths that filled my heart, my mind, my self-worth especially through worship. And that feeling just wouldn't let me go. And one day, I read something that slapped me silly. Fear. False evidence appearing real. Let that, let that sink in for a minute. Fear is the enemy of progression. It can literally keep you where you are for maybe even years. I can't even count how many times I wanted to quit before I even started because I was so scared. And for what? Feeling scared for what? Just the feeling? I was all types of scared. Scared I didn't look the part. I'm not confident enough. You don't have time for this. You got kids. And then some. Scared of failure. Scared of success. Oh yeah, that exists. Scared this whole thing would change me. What would people think? What would they say? And the list goes on and on. I honestly thought God would eventually get over me because I doubted so much. But he made sure, through various signs, people, even songs, that he was never going to let me go until I accepted this. That's when I started to believe more and more that this is really for me. restaurant that we're gonna visit is one of my personal favorites and I think it's because I personally know the chef he's an amazing chef that he grew up and studied culinary school in Greece and he came here he has a beautiful family and one of the top 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 chefs in my opinion in the tri-state area so let's go check it out Um, and it is a sampling of a Greek flavor and it has different types of dips and they're all Greek so the first one we have here it's a tzatziki and it is a Greek yogurt with cucumber and garlic and it also comes with olive oil a little bit of olive oil this one is skordalia which it has beets and potato and that's why it's so like nice and red it has that little beet look this one is the eggplant dip that it has eggplant and olive oil as well and this one is the caviar dip that is a Greek style caviar dip with olive oil and lemon juice it's delicious so we're gonna taste here we have our regular pita bread and we're just gonna dab it on a little bit taste the tzatziki first so nice and creamy and I could taste the pieces of cucumber and the olive oil it goes so nicely together the next one we're going to try is the scordalia with the beets it also has a potato which makes it so delicious it gives it such a nice 
healthy, but at the same time, so delicious. Hint. The next one that we have here is the eggplant dip, which has the greenish um, texture to it of the eggplant. And I can taste the richness in it. It's very rich. This one's very rich. Very good. And the last one I'm going to taste is a Greek style caviar dip with olive oil, and it also has lemon juice in it. So I'm really excited because I love anything lemon. The lemon is very, very key to this dip. And it's so nice and creamy. Oh, excellent. I have to say, it's a really tough choice to pick which one is the best one, but I'm really, really stuck between the caviar dip and the tzatziki. They're just so rich and creamy. This is actually one of their best selling appetizers, which is called the piquilla, which it brings four different dips. So the next plate that we're gonna try is also an appetizer, and this is the Koryatiki salad, which is a regular Greek salad that has tomatoes, peppers, green and red peppers. It also has onions, cucumbers, crepers, which is the, the little brown crepers on top, and it has a nice slice of feta cheese. This looks delicious, I can't wait to try it. So good. And so our next plate, it's also an appetizer, and it's a delicious, delicious grilled octopus over fava beans with fresh onions and just drizzled with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So this looks, and I hope it tastes delicious, but it looks amazing. Presentation, A+. Plus. The texture of the octopus is so interesting. On the outside, it's so nice and crunchy, and on the inside, it's so nice and, and soft and like gooey, but in a very, very delicious way. This is actually one of the most requested plates that people come here to eat. And I could see why. It's so, so good. So here we have two other appetizers that look so good. Oh my goodness, this presentation is just to die for. So the first one here, we have seared scallops that are sautéed scallops with cauliflower puree. Also raisin and capers covered vinaigrette, which is sauce that you can put with the scallops. So I'm just going to grab a little bit and I'm going to smear it with the the cauliflower puree and I'm gonna get a little bit of that vinaigrette sauce oh my goodness so I'm just gonna put this on my plate because I don't want to dirty my shirt I'm gonna grab a little bit of these delicious sauces here just put them right like that it also has like a little hint of like it's not spicy but it gives a little kick and the scallops are so nice and juicy oh and on top they're nice and seared and you could definitely taste that the most perfect scallops by far that I have ever tasted. If I could share this with you right now, I definitely would. I want you to taste so bad. The next plate we have here is called Garide Saganaki, and it's an appetizer as well. And it is sauteed jumbo shrimp with feta cheese, tomato sauce, and ozo. It's in a, and it's prepared Greek style in a pan. I love shrimp, so I can't wait to just take a bite of this. The shrimp is so good and fresh. The tomato is so creamy and the cheese just gives it a hint that it makes it... These two dishes that I just tasted, they're so good. I just want to savor every single beet bit and every single bite of this. It's so good. I cannot stress it enough. All these plates that I just tasted are appetizers, but you could definitely get a couple of these appetizers and have them as entrees. There's actually many customers that have come, they come here just for the appetizers because they're that delicious. I have seen people order the Ganide Saganaki, which is the jumbo shrimp, as an entree. Also the seared scallops as well as an entree. So these might be in their appetizer section, but they're definitely one of a kind entrees with their presentation and the taste is to die for. So good, so good. I'm so glad that we came here. So here we have a traditional Greek dessert that is called baklava and it has pistachio walnuts almonds and it has a special orange and cinnamon syrup all smeared all over on top of it oh and I forgot the best part it has a little bit of vanilla ice cream right in the middle look at this sucker 
So sweet. The perfect combination of sweet and salty with the nuts and also the ice cream and also crunchy and soft because the baklava is usually layered with all these custards. So good with phyllo layered custards. But the ice cream makes it so nice and smooth. Mm. So worth it. So Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so this restaurant from the atmosphere to the entrees and the appetizers and the plates Oh, this is such an easy one. This is definitely a dine in everything from the menu to the nice lighting and just every single Delicacy of the of the delicious plates that they serve. Oh, it's such a treat. It's such a treat I'm so excited that you were able to share this with me and stick around for the next one Thanks <laughs> Even the best of the best have had tough times following their passion. Stavros stumbled upon his love for the culinary arts at the age of 16 just by delivering pizza and then actually getting in the kitchen and making them in the small village he lived in in Greece. Just goes to prove that if you keep walking in your truth, your calling will come to you. Then he went to culinary school in his late 20s and didn't let his age intimidate him because of how old you have to be to go to school. That didn't stop him. He faced many fears that were in his way like coming to America and not knowing how anything would turn out, and now being one of the greatest chefs in northern New Jersey. He's very well known and admired just for believing in himself and being in love with his job with all his heart. Missing out on family time with his wife and his baby boy is a fear he has now, but knows that with the good schedule and determination, it won't stop him from both his passions of his family and thirst of exceeding in his expertise in the culinary arts. If we really think about it, Fear is just a voice and a barrier that keeps us stuck, that keeps us from becoming who we really want to be or doing the things that we want to accomplish. That's why we have to talk back to fear with actions. Even if it's just one action a day, we're becoming a better us. Don't rush. It's not a race. Push aside negative vibes and what people may say or think. Push those things outside of you away. You can't control them. God will deal with them. You can only control you and making the decision of getting over this stepping stone of fear. Get up or dust yourself off and try again. Now I'm going to go chase those best things in life on the other side. Because God told me so. And he's also telling you. Grace and peace. <laughs>